Hello guys and welcome to a brand new video. Today I'm here with The Legend of Korra book 3 episode number 1 and 2 reactions. Alright the previous two episodes which was the final two episodes of book 2. Um, it was a very good ending. I really enjoyed the ending because there was like you know development. Now uh, the previous two episodes what actually happens is like Korra like you know versus Unalak happens and uh, Tenzin finds Jinora back. Uh, while trying to find Jinora back, Tenzin was able to uh, stand up to his own problems, his own complexes, you might say, and he was able to, you know, come into terms with it. Like you know, the way he always kind of uh, overthinks about whether he is able to uh, make his uh, father proud. That thing, that thing, he was able to overcome. You can say, and uh, yeah. So uh, Jinora, we got Jinora back and Korra like you know was fighting against Unalok and then like you know Desna and uh, Eska and Desna also joins us after like you know careful consideration of their dad and um, Eska's love for Bolin <laughs> and um, yeah and, and in the final episode we have the huge fight Korra loses, Vatu fuses with um, Unalok, Unalok goes to the city, tries to destroy everything, Republic City. Um, Raiko, I was like, like now look at this now. Like you know, you you decided not to help Korra. Now this is happening, and you you have to like you know like uh, like I'm pretty sure he realized like yeah I should have just helped her out at that moment. But anyways, like what has like you know can't like you know cry over spilt milk. So now Korra. Uh, meditates in the tree of time and she like you know his, her spirit comes out she goes to the same place that Ang went you know in that spiritual place and she becomes this huge blue giant and there's like a fight between Korra and Unalok and uh, she was again kind of losing because she kind of got distracted trying to bring Rava back uh, so in the end Jinora came in kind of saved her I guess I don't know how she did that but she came and saved Korra and Korra was able to get Rafa back uh, Unalak and Vatu both disintegrates I'm pretty sure Unalak is dead Vatu however I don't think he's dead as Rava said before like there will always be light and there will always be darkness however in small amounts so these things can never go completely uh, you know cannot completely disappear there will be small traces of it left and uh, yeah Korra brings balance and peace back to the world and uh, yeah everything's good um two more things happens first thing is that oh Bolin tries to like you know get together with um Eska but unfortunately Eska's like I'm sorry like you know I kind of <laughs> went too much into that uh and uh, yeah I have my own job so I cannot go back I can go with you to Republic City and that was kind of sad uh that happens number two the second thing that happens is Cora and Ma Marco breaks up and I think this is this time it's for real because it seemed pretty serious this time because they know that yeah like it's, it's not working out and the third thing that happens is Cora decides to keep the um, portal open and uh, this time she will like you know try to go in a new way like you know she is not going to look back at their ancestors what they did she's going to do what she thinks is the best and what the world thinks is the best and she's going to keep it open and the spirits they're free to come humans are free to go like you know come and go and uh, yeah and if something happens by any chance uh Korra will be the protector and help everyone out so this is the biggest change that happened in the final season of the previous episode so let's see what this episode brings this is the first episode uh, of Le the legend of Korra uh, book three so yeah let's see so uh, i'll be putting the subtitles and the timer here sync it to whichever is your preference and let's get started okay here's the countdown three two one hmm Yes. Okay, there you go. Una Vatu. Oh, Una Lakan Vatu. 
Okay. A breath of fresh air. All right. Ah, uh, there you go. Bunju. <laughs> okay. Bo okay. Bumi. Don't fall. <laughs> out of tree. Yo! You're gonna break your... Oh my god! Yo! Oh, there you go, Cora. No, it's him! Okay, I was not expecting that. I thought Cora saved him. Maybe living with the spirits kind of... I don't know, made something change within him. And he can airbend now. <laughs> Look at that. Oh, that's good. Damn. Oh, it comes back. <laughs> well. Hmm. Oh, yeah, that's true, you know, like. Oh, my God. Okay, this is the effect. Uh, yeah, this is the after effects of. Here we go again. <laughs> oh, so sad. I don't like this guy. The hell is wrong with these people? Oh, they are okay. People can never be content. Here we go again. Wow, Raiko. Wow, you're going to die a second early. Yeah, like what were you doing, Raiko? A ridiculous type of a person this guy is what is wrong with him eight <laughs> percent uh. oh <laughs> it's like I have air bending. Whoa! <laughs> All right. <laughs> Hilarious. Okay, no, no, the main thing comes after this. All right, come on. Are they? Maybe in emergency situation, it kind of kicked in. <laughs> oh my god, no one's believing him. Boonju saw it, you know? <laughs> Knitting. <laughs> Brooding teenager. Oh my god. Oh. Uh. <laughs> Good impression. 
What? Okay. <laughs> I, I was just saying that. Okay, not like that. Why is he sweating? Or is that like... Oh yeah! Nice! There you go! Everyone have to believe you now. <laughs> he did not expect that. He's like, what? I was just joking. R Only Rohan is happy. Look at him. Oh. Okay. Damn, Marco. He's <laughs> there. Oh, the bending. Okay. Oh no! He's wrecking the whole place up. Oh no, no, it's something else. Okay, I thought. Okay, never mind. Oh no! I feel like a lot of people are because of the spirits, most probably. They're living with. This is not only Boomi. Okay, this is a little bit concerning, isn't it? Oh, he's going to rock. No, there you go. Okay, don't go out. Oh no, he's going to. Yup. <sighs> yeah. No, no, not that. Like the vines and everything, I think. <laughs> oh. Or maybe who are getting people who are getting friendly with spirits, they're gaining them. And like Boomy has Boomju with him. <laughs> Marco's like what? Oh yeah. <laughs> Another one. Maybe he's flying now, you know? Oh boy, they're awkward. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Tenzin, just Just leave! Yeah, he's being bothered. I can't blame him though. Ladies, yeah. Yeah, okay, well. Okay, maybe master driving, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Alright, you should probably stop now. Who's behind them? Okay. Oh. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, okay. I understand where this is going. Yeah, it's fine. Well, obviously, they're broken up now. And that as well. Okay, at least they're good friends now, you know? Yeah, there you go. 
Wait, Naga's a girl? Oh yeah. Okay. What the? Why don't you go back to okay? All right, Cora, you need to like you know, that's what I'm saying. There will be troublemakers. You need to stop these things, these pairs and these people. Oh, really? Okay. So many uh, new airbenders. Yeah. I don't think so. <laughs> oh yeah, maybe. <laughs> True. Okay, this kid is thinking about something else. No, he's so happy. <laughs> Maybe. Oh, no, no. Oh, okay. <laughs> Oh god, yeah, okay. Why don't you go and do your job, president? What the hell? Ah, oh, this guy's pissing me off, Raiko. Alright. You know what, if this... If this actually works... This is increase Topaz, uh, Cora's <laughs> polls, poll, poll result or whatever that was, from 8% to maybe, I don't know, 18%? Oh, okay. Will that work? Ah, it's working. Nice. Rack was like, wait, this wasn't supposed to happen? I thought she was going to fail and we were going to make fun of her. Oh, I'm sad. Okay. What? Oh no. Okay. Well, it it okay. Nah, it's not going to 18%. It's going to fall down to 2% now. For us poll results or maybe 0%. Oh my god. Yeah, okay, this is not working. Oh. Yeah, all right. Okay. Oh my god. Oh! Well, there goes her popularity. <laughs> ah, I guess. You're right, Bolin. Hmm. Yeah, that's true. Oh, yeah. Oh. I don't think so. Like, we need to adapt little by little, I guess. Ah. Oh. I'm sure a lot of people are happy about like you know the spirits being I don't know exactly thank you 
Like, ah. Uh. Yep. Yeah, there you go. I was just saying this. Um, I don't know if that's how it's going to go, but let's see. Why? Well, you're just a kid, you know? Yeah, okay. Oh my god! <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> okay, well, let's see what our new airbender is doing. I feel like he's like afraid. Yeah, oh my god. Uh Okay, don't Oh my god. Yeah, don't startle him like that. All right, Cora. Yeah, this is the avatar. <laughs> Oh. oh my god ah this is a problem i don't think he wants that Maybe, let's see. Okay! Yeah, there you go. Let's go. Directly to the temple. Okay, people are happy, I can see. Jaw. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, tens. Will this guy be annoying the whole season? Wow. Wow, you're so intelligent. You're telling the avatar to go now. What are you going to do? Yeah, what are you going to do with the vines now? Will you, will you stop it? This guy, this guy is completely, like, what type of, okay. Okay, they're taking this in a very positive light. I like that. Like, yeah, Raiko, do your thing now. Let's see what you're going to do. I'm I'm waiting for the day when when he's he's going to come groveling to us the like to the avatar and like and ask for her help and be like sorry like you know it was my mistake I should have never told you to leave the place I'm, I'll be waiting for that day what the hell is happening here some ancient Zahir another Indian name wow was Roha now Zahir. Lahima Weightlessness Ooh Hmm Let's 
it is a lie wow what a wise oh wow this guy's kind of cool Ooh. <laughs> nice i don't know who he is he might be some kind of villain but I Oh, he got his bending abilities. Damn! Ah, uh, Tenzin! Tenzin must be very happy now. Look at this. We have a new airbender within us. Is this like some kind of a prison? Yeah, I think so. Damn! Woo! Wow! Okay, this guy's pretty cool. Oh, 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 damn! Oh, yeah, he, he's a villain. I, I'm, I'm, I was getting pretty hyped with the with things he was doing, but I was pretty sure he's a villain. He is cool though, you know. Like, just look at him. Wow. Okay. Uh. That's it. Now, you know what? I, I don't know what this guy will be like, Zahir. But I like villains who, are, who don't resort to trickery, you know? Like, who are really talented and really just, you know, completely, um, you know, uh, show their abilities based on their actual strength and everything. And maybe their actual intellect, all these things. Like, you know, I, I really uh, love those type of villains. Unlike people, like, you know, villains who just resort to trickery and, you know, like, like, try to trick others. For example, Unalok. Like, at first he tried to, like, you know, he, he was just a walking, like, you know, person full of lies. Walking bag of lies. He was just that type of a, like, you know, disgusting type of person. That's why I never liked Unalok. He, he had a very boring backstory. And at the, at the same time, he was just, just plain bad. Like, you know, he, he just, just, I don't know. So... And yeah, that's why I really didn't like him. While like you know, if if there's like a certain villain who actually is completely based on their strength, you know, like uh, this guy seems pretty powerful, uh, or completely based on their intellect. If there's a villain like that, I really prefer those type of villains. So I'm not sure how what this guy will do, uh, but if he is kind of like this, without resorting to trickery, directly challenges the avatar or something along those lines, I think I'll be happy with this guy. But we'll see. We, we still don't know what's going to happen. All right. This um uh this this episode now. Oh boy. Um, I'm getting really pissed off at Raiku now. You know, like the previous uh, season, he kind of was you know was on my nerves. And but I was like, yeah, like let let's just you know like not pay attention to him. But here in this first episode, he's very much pissing me off. I feel like, and I really, I really hope he he loses the election. Which I don't know what's, if it's going to happen or not. <laughs> his, his poll results are pretty low, but I don't know. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, so. Okay, this episode. Uh, first of all. We see. Excuse me. Uh, Boomy. The first thing is we, we see is Boomy. Trying to uh, get Boomju back. And he was trying to. Uh, <laughs> make him wear a sweater <laughs> that was funny uh boomy falls and he airbends now here i thought of a few uh things why people are starting airbending suddenly uh, at that moment i did not know that everyone else was also airbending uh i like and obviously i thought like oh it's probably boomy is the only one but later on we get to know like a lot of people has, have started airbending now it's kind of interesting to see the whole thing is to like I've only seen people awakening to air bending. No one's fire bending or water bending. Why is people only air bending? That's kind of a question that I have. Um, like I have a few theories as to why this is happening. Number not few, but only one, which is that I feel like since there's a lack of air benders in this world, maybe that's why you know like nature is trying to balance it. You know like, and and that's why air benders are being suddenly. Uh, like you know awakening to people are awakening to airbending because there's a very less amount of airbenders 
so maybe that's why we can we're only seeing people who are awakening to air bending only not fire bending or water bending i don't know this is just my guess and the reason why this is happening um this can go a few ways one like a theory that i have is that uh, because of the vines and like you know since the spirit world is getting like you know like mixed with the human world and that's the reason why people are suddenly uh, awakening their bending abilities that's one theory another theory is maybe people who are close to spirits uh for example bumi here he is close to bumju i still don't know i think Do. What, what was his name do or Do, the new airbender um i don't know if she, he had any kind of contact with any kind of spirit but if he has any contact with some kind of a spirit it's it's going to make sense that oh because you know people who are friendly to spirits are suddenly gaining this airbending power so we'll see about that like you know these are a few theories that i kind of uh, i'm kind of thinking of um but it's pretty sure that this is happening because the uh, spirit world and the human world is connected that's why this is happening that i'm pretty sure about but why is it happening and how is it happening we still don't have those answers which i'm sure we'll get to know in the future hmm. all right so now a problem has started is vines are you know completely over like you know just just kind of messing things up people normal lives up now i can kind of understand why people are getting pissed obviously like you know if, if your house has a huge tree growing through it <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty sure <laughs> a lot of people are going to get pissed with that so i can understand that but for raiko i i i, I don't like that you know that whole thing like um, okay so let's talk about this like step by step uh cora is like all right we need to destroy these vines but we don't know how to do it he just she tries to destroy it but it grows back again and <clears throat> so now this is a problem for sure like obviously now this this thing i think like you know like like people and human beings they have like rules and regulations to keep them you know like they're not like to keep, to keep them kind of not like, you know, not letting them do something illegal or something wrong that's why we have rules and regulations but for spirits suddenly coming to this world obviously i don't know if they have rules rules and regulations within their place but at least i'm pretty sure a lot of spirits would not like you know uh, maintain the rules and regulations of the human society they're going to come here a lot of them and they're going to do whatever the hell they want to and that's probably what is happening now like a lot of spirits who really don't care about other people and you know like only think about their own things they are just making these vines and we saw like that little spirit thing you know who was just acting rude about the whole thing and he was like oh it is because of you avatar you were the one who did this now I, we are just living here that type of a thing and yeah there will definitely be spirits like that which yeah which is a problem i i do understand that <laughs> i feel like like you know what i think we need to go to like i don't know if there's like some leader of the spirits or something but if there's some person some spirit like that we actually need to go to that one that spirit and actually tell that spirit that you know what your people or your <laughs> citizens are making a mess out of our place so can you please just you know like control them I think that's what need, is needed here because obviously there will be a lot of spirits that just do whatever the hell they want to so unless and until someone controls them and someone tells them that oh you should not do this uh, like you know and actually place some rules and regulations this they, they're going to keep doing this and uh, yeah that's a big problem i understand that <coughs> obviously cora is pretty angry about the whole thing he, she's like yeah what am i supposed to do i'm i'm i'm, I'm unable to do anything I'm supposed to be the avatar and I'm failing at this. So did I did I make a wrong like you know uh, choice of actually kind of mixing the whole thing uh letting spirits come here. Now <clears throat> Okay, now here's the thing. The 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 people who are really pissing me off in this episode are the reporters and Raiko. Now, the normal people citizens, I can understand their like you know feelings. Obviously, there will be a lot of people who are pissed off because their house is overgrown with weeds and i don't blame them and i can understand their problem but the thing that's pissing me off is these reporters just standing here and just it's like you know asking nonsensical questions 
and just trying to get the people riled off because obviously um they they need to do that that's basically the media you know like they, they need to do that they need to get like a response from <clears throat> the people uh, you know like the, the people who are in you know like in, in the leadership position otherwise you know like they're like you know, their people won't read their <laughs> reports like so as always like you know this is the media people so i, I guess they are supposed to do this trying to rile people up the thing that's like you know uh, kind of made me angry is them and Raiko as well trying to kind of completely put this on Korra. Now, <clears throat> and this this part really pissed me off. Raiko is saying the Avatar has put us all in this position, but my administration and like yeah, like dude, what were you doing when Korra asked for your help? When Korra said that I need an army to fight Unalok, otherwise he's going to destroy the world, what were you doing? You were like, oh, I don't want to get into this mess. Um, yeah, I'll stay in my office sipping coffee while the whole world gets destroyed. I don't care. At least my people are fine. Didn't you say that? And now you're putting the blame on Korra after Korra saved you all? You're going to die in a plane crash. This guy was going to die in a plane crash. You know? <laughs> and 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 he and, he, and he, he's doing this now at this point wow great like putting everything on Korra great like I could have understood if he actually said something along these lines if he would he was like oh <clears throat> yeah Korra this is actually you know a little bit of a problem uh, you know you kind of mix the spirit and the human world together so we need to come up with a you know, solution to this if he said it along these lines and you know like if he kind of blamed Korra like that I would have been still fine with it but he's actually putting everything on Korra everything and not acknowledging the fact that you know like this this whole city was actually saved by her he's putting the blame on her wow mm, yeah like I, I think this, this guy's gonna piss me off pretty much this whole season and uh, but you know what's the good thing here Korra actually left in the end and I, I think we probably will not have to deal with this guy that much that I thought we will have to and uh, yeah be, be happy with your weeds now or your vines and uh, like you know you, you drove the avatar away from your city let's see how you interact this like you know counteract this whole mess I'm, 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 I'll be looking forward to that you know how he's going to um, save his city let's see without the avatar's help <clears throat> All right. Um, so <laughs> next, uh, next thing we, we see, Boomy coming back. Back, Boomy's like, "Oh wait, you guys, you know what I did?" Um, he starts giving like a whole explanation about how he was knitting and everything. <laughs> Tenzin's like hilarious. Just goes away, <laughs> and uh, and Boomy tries to event, but nothing happens. He's like, "Guys, I'm 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 telling the truth." You know, I'm, I'm, I'm not joking. No one's obviously believing him. And uh, it's nice to see, like, you know, like all these, like, you know, everyone's just here. Uh, Bolin is here. Um, As Asami is here. <clears throat> uh, obviously, because their place is over, like, you know, run by <laughs> vines. So. <clears throat> and Marco, but Marco is not here. And I, I can understand, you know, like, both Asami and Korra is here. So, obviously, Marco is going to get a little bit um you know awkward about this whole situation it's going to take time but i'm sure he's going to uh start acting normally again after a few months maybe we'll see <clears throat> so yeah now everyone's here just like you know having uh, their meal and boomy is like oh i can do this i can do this look at me look at me <laughs> milo throws a like a plate i think yeah at him and he airbends and we can see like it's only when he's kind of really in danger or something that he can airbend at least for now and uh, yeah now here up until in this moment i thought like boom is the only one who has like you know who's airbending now uh because obviously he is ang's son but then we come out like you know marco gets a call and we see i think daw was or was it do what was his name i forgot he has started airbending now 
excuse me um <clears throat> here i kind of understand okay so this is basically happening to almost everyone and uh, now marco and like you know like uh, beifong comes in and they get to know that this is happening everywhere throughout the whole republic city it's not only boomy so yeah now okay now we see Korra and asami and Korra's like you know driving and everything <laughs> I'm glad to see that they're like and actually have become friends now like no awkwardness or anything and they're even comfortable about talking the whole Marco situation and um you know they can laugh it away and uh, yeah they they even like you know <laughs> like told about like the things they did you know like Asami about how he kissed Marco and all that stuff so I'm like okay this is good like you know no awkwardness between them and uh, yeah this is nice Okay, so then, then the what was that? Like a weird spirit creature comes in. Looks like a porcupine, I think. <laughs> okay, this spirit was very rude. I have to say, he's like, like you know, he's like, you made the world this way, and uh, you know, stuff like that. He was like, like what are we supposed to do? This and that. He was talking. Like I was going to say, like you could just go back to your spirit world and live there why are you here then if you if you like you know like if, if you're actually blaming it on Korra, you know like so why why what are you doing here you're blaming it on Korra, and then you're staying here like what the hell is wrong with you um <clears throat> but i don't know as i said like there will be troublemakers everywhere like uh, as as like you know as long as like you know like everything exists uh there will definitely be humans who will also like you know kind of rile up trouble and spirits as well the problem here is like for humans um there are people who can stop them with rules and regulations you know like the you know for example Korra and the police and everything but we still don't know what is supposed to happen with the spirits do they do they even have any kind of laws or rules do they even have a leader like we still don't know about that so for now these people are these spirits are doing whatever they want to just being here so we actually need to know if they'll actually have like some kind of rules and regulations or if they does not have any we need to uh, make some new rules and regulations and let them understand that you know what you're bothering us if you want to stay with us you have to like you know obey these rules and regulations otherwise you are not welcome here you know if you want to stay with us you're free to do so but protect and maintain the rules and regulations you can't just start living in the middle of the street like like what what is that so they need to kind of do that and if they have some kind of a leader then it's that's 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 the best i think like we know you know we need to go to that leader and actually tell that spirit leader like this is happening and you need to actually um kind of control your people and let them like you know protect our rules and laws but anyways i don't know what's going to happen how they're going to resolve this we'll see okay so <clears throat> Tenzin is pretty happy about this whole situation because new airbenders are being born but I don't know I kind of feel conflicted about this situation because even if new airbenders are being born like at least the people who are being airbenders they don't like you know it's not that they're giving consent to this that's what's kind of bothering me you know like maybe some person might not want to airbend maybe they want to be a normal person and still they're becoming an airbender like that's what actually is bothering me. I'm happy that N Tenzin is happy that we are get they're getting more airbenders, but the whole constant thing is kind of bothering me. For example, that do or dog guy, at first he said I don't want to airbend. I don't want to be a bender. Like that thing. Like like you you can't just force anyone to be like oh welcome. You know you're our airbender brother now. You know like uh, we welcome you. So you can't be like that to a like anyone like there, there might be people who doesn't want to bend what about them like that's kind of bothering me i don't know what's going to happen with that we'll see okay now raiko comes back again and starts doing his own thing uh, he came <laughs> now the Korra came up with a new plan to actually stop the vines and raiko came here with a lot of reporters He's like, oh, we are here to watch. Now, I thought maybe Korra would be successful here and, you know, Raikou's popularity will drop and Korra's will increase or something. But unfortunately, it did not happen like that. It was kind of going that way, but nah. So, 
at first he, he tries she tries to cleanse the whole thing like he cleansed the spirits and it's kind of like an in intelligent uh, like you know like decision because the spirits were kind of calmed down because he did that you know kind of cleansed them or did something but now that i think about it those were actually uh, dark spirits but these are normal spirits so maybe these don't work with them and and uh, it actually kind of backfired because you're purifying them or doing whatever you are doing maybe they got powered up with that you know because dark spirits if these were dark vines or dark spirit vines something like that maybe it would have been cleansed out but since these are normal spirit vines i'm guessing it kind of backfired and these things kind of started going more crazy and just you know kind of went berserk and it went in such a bad direction that uh, like a whole house was like you know a apartment was just almost came crashing down and Koro was there to help everyone out but oh boy people are going to be pissed at this obviously and uh, <laughs> I was just saying that oh maybe Korra's poll are go is going to increase now if he she's able to do this properly from 8% to 18% but nah it's going to go to 2% now <laughs> it's kind of sad all right so Cora is kind of like you know like a little bit bothered by this obviously this whole thing and here Tenzin comes and reassures her I'm, I'm, I'm glad that Tenzin is actually kind of helping her out with this but yeah like Tenzin is pretty happy about this situation <laughs> he's like oh new airbenders new brothers <laughs> who we can welcome oh but yeah like uh but but I'm glad that she he's kind of helping her out sort out her uh feelings and just like Tenzin said, you know, like obviously, um, like okay, where is this? Like this part I really liked. Where, where is that part? Um, uh, here you go. You're not the president, Cora. Yeah. Uh, your job isn't to fix the daily problems of every public in Republic City. Your responsibility is to bring balance to the entire world. Like, yeah, this is what I was just trying to say here, you know, like the re media reporters are like acting as if each and every person's well-being is like Cora's responsibility or something. Like, what the hell is wrong with you guys? You guys are like, you know, adults, like a problem is happening and we are trying to like, you know, kind of counteract that problem. You should understand that and try to help us out, not ask weird questions like this and bother us. Like Cora's trying her best to kind of like you know make everything okay. He, she's not sitting down and just doing nothing, and you're you're bothering her like you know trying to like you know like messing her whole thing up. So this is the thing. Like and the, the president's kind of like you know like fanning the flames. It's like ah oh, Cora like you know you 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 are the reason you are the reason. Like what the hell is wrong with you guys? Like you guys were going to die a few days earlier because of your beloved president never decided to help out Cora. Cora saved you guys and now you are actually like you know putting each and every problem on his, her shoulders like like this happened in Avatar The Last Airbender as well and it's happening here again and like you know you can pretty much understand like this is going to continue like people can never be like you know uh, content they're always going to find something or the other some kind of problem and uh, yeah that's basically what's happening and i understand they, this whole vine problem is a big problem as i said like and i myself would have been pissed if my uh, <laughs> house was overridden with vines but you know like placing that whole blame on Cora when a few days earlier you were going to almost die because of vatu that's not good obviously like you you, you can see she's trying her best she saved you guys like oh god but yeah Now here we can see the chorus saying that I my connection has gone completely dark with the um, you know like um, past uh, past avatars. Now I actually did not understand this in the previous episode. Now I understand this. I remember her saying something about this is the last I'm the last you know avatar. So that means this cycle of rebirth has been cut off. So that means Korra is the last avatar. I actually understood it in this episode, not the previous one. I, 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 I really wasn't able to actually uh, understand that properly. I understand it now since he's unable to, like, you know, look at the past avatars' memories and everything. She, since he's not connected, the cycle has been broken. So she, after she dies, there won't be any avatar anymore. I think that's what's happening. Let me know if I'm wrong. So 
okay anyways bolin comes in and he's like oh that dog guy he, he's like you know on top of a bridge <laughs> kind of you know scared and yeah Korra comes in and Korra tries to calm him down but unfortunately doll is like you know like at first i was thinking like the, the thing that doll said is like you know i I, can't, I was just talking about this he says that i don't want to bend and i was just thinking this you know Tenzin's pretty happy about this situation but i don't like this situation because there, there'll be a lot of people who actually don't want to bend they're going to become benders and uh, what about their feelings you know like maybe there's some people who wanted to bend forever and now that they're getting their bending power they'll be pretty happy but the opposite also is also true maybe there's someone who don't want to bend and that person becomes a bender like there's there's a thing of consent you know so being happy about the situation i think it's kind of shallow to think about it but still you know like we can't do anything about the situation we need to think of some countermeasures and we need time for that so Korra's like for now let let's go with us you know like we're going to take you to the air temple dog falls down almost Korra helps him out and uh, yeah dog seems like a nice guy he's he seems pretty accepting of a lot of things but we'll see at least he's not screaming that oh i didn't want this why is this happening at least he's calm unlike half of the other people here who are just like just riling up everything for example our beloved president raiko and he's like oh we never wanted this i order you to leave this city and yeah you know what i i don't i don't really understand is this guy really that stupid like the first stupidity that he did was in the previous season where he did not help Korra out even after he was seeing so much things were happening and he was like oh i'm going to live here like you know not do anything because i am concerned about my citizens and like the thing never came to his mind that if Korra loses the world loses and everyone's going to die so like like i don't understand is this guy that foolish is he that stupid he's not understanding the problem this episode here as well he does another stupidity he says he drives Korra out of the city. Now what are you going to do? Are you going to counteract the whole vine problems now? What's he going to do now? Without the Avatar's help? Is he that stupid? He's not understanding that actually driving Korra out made hit the problem even worse. He's going to have more trouble with this. And he just drives her out. I'm like, what is wrong with this guy? I'm, I don't, I really am unable to try, like, I'm, I'm trying to catch what this guy is trying to do, but I'm unable to understand what he's trying to do. Like, he, he seems extremely stupid. Like, the decisions that he's taking are just, are just baffling me. Like, it's not that he's taking wrong decisions deliberately. I feel like he's genuinely taking wrong decisions, which is kind of bothering me. That, like, that would mean he's actually stupid. You know, like, like, I feel like he's not understanding the, the actual problem. He, he drives Cora away. And now who's going to take care of the vines now? Who's going to do that? He, does he not think about that? I don't understand. We'll see. Um, and then Cora's uh, like, you know what? Yeah, I'm going away. Like, let's, like, you know, like a lot of airbenders are being born or like <laughs> not being born, but kind of getting to know. So let's like you know revive the air nomads back. Now here we get like a weird scene where there's someone in prison in the middle of nowhere. Uh, like you know the, the people were firebending the guards. So I'm guessing this is a fire nation. Um, so this guy Zahir and another Indian name you know like Zahir is also another com a common name in India. Zahir Rohan you know and yeah <laughs> okay so this guy he, he seems pretty cool you know he, he talks about oh my the, the thing that he said um it's kind of interesting um is he talks about a guru where is it um have you ever read the poetry of the great airbending guru a uh, guru laghima Lahima. Guru Lahima lived 4,000 years ago in the Northern Air Temple. It is said that he unlocked the secret of weightlessness and became untethered from the earth, living his final 40 years without ever touching the ground. 
Is that how it planned to escape uh, Airbender's children's stories? And he's like, like all great children's tales, it contains truth within the myth. Lahima once wrote this one. I really like this quote. Instinct is a lie told by a fearful body. What an amazing line. Told by a fearful body. There you go. Hoping to be wrong. So instinct is a lie told by a fearful body. Hoping to be wrong. What an amazing line. Obviously, these guys don't understand. They're like, what, what's that supposed to mean? <laughs> it means that when you base your expectations only on what you see, you blind yourself to the possibilities of a new reality. And bam! <laughs> it just starts airbending. And they're like, wait, you, you, can, you shouldn't be able to bend. bend. Um, you know what I think? I, I think probably this is some person who was stopped by Aang and his bending was took away, taken away. That's why these people are like, oh, you couldn't bend. But now that this is happening, he got air bending. He, he, he can bend now again. And I'm kind of thinking about the situation of, I don't know. I think, you know what? I think Ozai is probably dead. Like, you know, I, I was thinking like Aang also took away Ozai's like, you know, bending. So will he start airbending after this? That'll be kind of concerning. But I realized like that happened a long time ago. So Oza is probably dead now. I don't know. Okay, he and oh my that that part was really cool. He starts bending and just destroying everyone. And damn. He, <laughs> the lines, he's like, now you might to ration that bowl of rice up until the next <laughs> you know shift change. And like, damn, this guy. He's really cool. I, he, who does he remind me of? He kind of reminds me of someone. I don't know, his face. Anyways, um, and he's like, okay, now I'll soon, like, you know, um, oh, it's the dawning of a new age, the end of the White Lotus, and soon the end of the Avatar. So White Lotus are going to get involved in this season, I'm guessing. So we'll see. And then he just jumps out. Okay, he looks like a cool antagonist. We'll see. Like, you know, as I said, if, uh, like, you know, I, I really hope he is, like, you know, not that type of uh, antagonist who just, again, resorts to trickery and just, you know, like, like I, I really want him to be a person who's just purely based on skills. I would love that type of an uh, antagonist. And I, I think he is going to be someone like that. He seems pretty cool but we'll see but yeah that's it that's for the, that's the first episode let's get started with the second episode uh and uh, this is episode number two of the legend of Korra, book three so i'll be putting the subtitles and the timer here sync it to whichever is your preference and let's get started all right here's the countdown three two one go <clears throat> Yep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, rebirth. All right. What? What is this? Damn, what is this? It's an airship or... Oh! Wow! That's Asami's! Oh, we're going to Ba Sing Se. <laughs> uh. Oh! Oh, okay, yeah. She can just do that. <laughs> so, like, you know, useful. Uh, yeah. Mm. 
And why is he talking like this? Okay. All right. Thanks. I think he's not going to join us because he's his police duty. He has his police duty, I think. Uh, oh my god, he is really stressing about this whole thing. Uh. Okay. Oh! <laughs> well. Yeah, you two are going to do that. <laughs> wow. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> You're getting balling. He's still not, uh, yeah, comfortable. Ah! Bowling! Wow. Oh. Oh, then he should go, I feel like. <laughs> Grandma tears. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Bowling! Okay. Yeah. Wow, Bolin can be con can can convince someone, you know, like look at him. Oh. <laughs> wow. Uh same is Ugi, isn't it there, Baxon, I think? Yeah. Okay. I'm sure a lot of people will be not happy about this. Uh, like the people who are bending, you know. Oh no, what is going to happen here? Oh no, everyone's... Wait, is this guy... Is this that guy from Avatar? The one with the third eye? Oh my god, all the prisoners are so, they're getting bending. Yo, this is a problem. No, no, this is someone else, I think. Who is this? Damn! Okay. Yeah. So the people whose bending Ang took away or someone took away? Gazan. Yeah. Um Okay, well. We're going to see the oh the king is probably dead. <laughs> I'm sorry. Go on. Okay. All right. Whoa. <laughs> Frank, bro! <laughs> uh, 
You're an airbending farmer. <laughs> I don't think he, he'll be happy. I don't think he, he would want that. Yeah, okay, I was just... <laughs> no. Oh boy, Tenzin. Obviously, yeah. Okay, Tenzin, calm down. No. Ah, yeah. <laughs> what ending? Yeah. Okay. Tenzin. I'm you know what? I'm with this guy. I I'm really with this guy. Like Like obviously, like what do you expect? Like you can't just tell people to leave everything and just go with you? How? No. No, no, it wouldn't work like that. Oh my god, Poland. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I don't think so. <laughs> well. Oh my god. The mom is like, obviously not. I'm not letting him put any tattoos. It's like, hell no! I want my meat! <laughs> yeah. You're going at this wrong way, Tenzin. Ah. <laughs> oh my god. Not like that. <laughs> there you go. Okay, no, Cora. You're just acting as thugs now. Oh. Okay. Oh, these people might. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Your, your son can get a job now. Oh! This is going pretty well. There you go. Let's see. Okay! Uh, will you help us? Yeah. Oh no. Oh. Okay, Cora, calm down. <laughs> um. <laughs> ah. Wow, this guy's pretty good with his words. Okay. Is the mom okay with this? Oh wow, the mom is really happy. It's like, finally. <laughs> wow! <laughs> Yo! Oh damn! Okay, Cora! Yes! <laughs> the mom was like, what the hell? You're gonna get a job. Now look, like, you're gonna go back to the basement again. <laughs> oh 
my god. At least one person was happy about this, you know, that mom. Oh my god, all the criminals are like, gathering in one place. Wait, this guy has no hands? Oh! Oh, this is a waterbender. Okay, you know what? I was wrong. I was just saying that only people are getting airbending, but we can see waterbender and airbender here. Okay. Wow. Wait, is that a male or a female? Ming Hua. I think that's a female. Ming Hua. Okay. Nah. Yeah, maybe. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, advertisement, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, let's see. You can also do this if you join us. <laughs> what kind of bullet? <laughs> Tattoo monster. <laughs> wow. Oh damn. Oh look at him. Oh look at that. You could also do this. If you join us and leave your family behind forever. So <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Oh my god. Ah! <laughs> They're like, oh, he really is one. Wait, I thought Tenzin was going to help. But never mind. Cora's just so happy. Oh my god, they're just like, yeah, let's let's torment him. <laughs> oh, nice, Boomy. Ah. Yeah, and you can do all these cool stuff. Hopefully at least one person comes. Oh, there you go. Nice. There you go. Okay. There you go. It was successful. This is a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. God. Yeah, I was thinking about that. Probably doesn't. Yeah. No. Oh. Uh. Oh.
run. Oh. Okay. <laughs> what what were those people behind him? Okay, these are these outlaws? These are the outlaws, I think. No. Who the These don't look like outlaws, who are they? Look like police or something. They kind of look like police officers. I don't know. They don't look like outlaws. Oh, damn. You know what? I feel like Kai is lying to them. I don't know. Let's see. Ooh. Ah, yes. As I said. Yeah, that's why he was so f hurrying to, like, you know, go away. <laughs> yeah, right. Pack of gold, or... Oh. oh. Nice family, okay. Really? Then why are you still... Why were you still holding on to that? Uh... Oh my god. Yeah, we, 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 yeah. Come on, Tenzin, don't be like that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, what can he steal from us, you know, like? <laughs> <laughs> I really hope he is not lying again. Yeah. I feel like I feel like uh... <laughs> Oh. You know what? I'm with Marco this time. I still don't trust this kid. Might try to do something. But you know, he's just a kid. Like, what can he even do? Oh, but he's a kid with airbending. Oh, I forgot about that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, Zuko! Zuko's here! Oh my god, look at him! <laughs> look at Zuko! Yeah... Oh! Damn, look at Zuko's... Lin ba okay. Okay, there you go. We're, we're all coming together, I think. Damn, Zuko's a dragon! Wow! Okay, this... Okay, this is really good. Okay, this is a really good start. I'm loving this. You know? 
just like how I really did not like the start of season two. This start of season three is really amazing. I'm I'm really liking it. Okay, let's see. Let, let's hope that this continues up until the next uh, last episode of book three. And not only book three, up, up until book four. I really want this to kind of continue this type of a thing. Oh. Yeah, cause this, this episode was really good. <clears throat> okay, so... Like, like, look at this. Like, you know, we're off to try like, you know, to recruit new people. No more Raikou's bullcrap, you know? And yeah, I'm really glad. Like, thank God we left Republic City at least. Like, we should stay away from there up until, like, you know, Raikou, I don't know, like, loses the presidentship somehow. Hopefully he does someday. And let's go back then. Like, oh my God. <laughs> All right. So we are off um, to find new airbenders. And Zami comes in with a new airship uh, after the, like, you know, like help of future industries. Um, so I'm guessing Varric also helped in like, you know, kind of making this whole po thing possible. And they're still partners, I'm guessing. So, yeah. Okay, so... So, m most of us, like, you know, like, most of them joins us. Like, our old team, uh, not old team, but our team of the team avatar joins us. Uh, at first, Marco was kind of hesitating about this whole thing. Because... You know, like the whole thing with Korra and Asami is also there. So yeah, uh, I don't, I don't blame him. He he's getting a little bit, uh, like you know, kind of concerned about this whole thing and being a little awkward. Uh, but at first he was like, oh, I need to do the police job, and yeah, I should not go this and that. <clears throat> Korra, Korra is trying her best. You can see, like you know, to kind of make this like you know situation more normal, kind of joking with him and everything, and. <clears throat> I really thought he would not join us because you know like the Republic City situation is pretty concerning and as a police officer I think he I thought he would not be able to really join us this time but it turns out like you know little <laughs> he probably called uh, Lin uh, we, we saw like you know he said like yeah Lin would not be happy with this uh, he probably called Lin and you know like talked with her and was like yeah I need to go avatar duty you know <laughs> team avatars duty we have to uh, and I think Beifong probably pardoned him for a few days or months, I'm guessing, we'll see. But yeah, now one thing I was not expecting is Jinora actually going with them. Uh, Kaya is uh, not with them, uh, Boomi is with them. So it's kind of like, a, like, you know, like a few people got added, a few people did not join us. For example, Kaya did not join us, um, while Boomi joined us uh and jinora joined us so i was not expecting jinora coming with us but it, it makes sense you know because jinora uh, is a lot more what can i say spiritually um capable of this whole thing so she she can help us out uh, especially because this whole situation is involving spirits so that's why i'm guessing jinora is here with us and uh yeah okay <laughs> i loved how <laughs> bowling convinced marco He's like, oh, like in Basing, say maybe we'll meet our grandmother. And our grandmother's like, oh, where is your brother? <laughs> and if I say that, yeah, my, like, you know, Marco is uh, doing his job and he might be, she might be so sad that she dies. And I'm like, okay, calm down, Bolin. <laughs> no need to go in that deep into the whole situation. <laughs> but. <clears throat> Yeah, Marco's like, okay, all right, fine. I guess they did not meet their grandmother because, you know, like, they, they kind of went throughout whole Ba Sing Se and, yeah, I don't think they met grandma. But anyways. So, yeah, we're off to our new journey. I, I really love the new airship. This looks, the airship looks fantastic. It's so huge. Like, this is like a <laughs> luxurious, like, you know, thing. Like, I, I feel like, like this is going to be a great... Like, you know, what can I say, like a, a little trip or a vacation kind of thing, you know, with friends. Like, imagine like having this huge of an airship and just moving from one place to another. And the, the inside seems really luxurious and oh boy, this is, this looks, looks really great. <laughs> but they do, do have a, like an important duty of actually gathering the airbenders. Now, here's one thing that I was con continuously telling in the previous episodes discussion section. Will people be happy about getting to airbend? A lot of people are happy, and even if they are happy, will they actually join them? 
because they have their own life and i i was just talking about this you know i was like yeah like this actual constant thing is actually bothering me like people are getting air bending but we don't even know if they're actually consenting to this you know if if there's someone who really wouldn't like to air bend like like let's just take something I'm, I'm taking a hypothetical situation here let's take a person you know who probably got traumatized by someone bending in their life like you know when they were was a child it, it probably like you know, like some kind of a ptsd to that person and whenever he sees he or she sees someone bending that person you know like goes into a complete breakdown that person if that person gets bending during this situation imagine what's going to happen to him you know like his life would be hell he he has the same power that traumatized him in his life like you know when he was a child like think about it in this way that's why i'm going i was just saying like this constant thing is actually bothering me and you know like tenzing being happy about this whole situation is also bothering me because i'm glad that he's happy that we're going to get new airbenders but you should also think of it from the other people's perspective and you know like you might you, you should think about them if they gave consent and if they are happy about this situation and if they are really willing to join you guys so and tenzing being you know happy about this whole situation was really bothering me a little bit that's why <clears throat> and yeah we can see what's happening uh you know after we go now it's kind of <laughs> uh i don't know like surprise me like no one thought about it like this like what like i can understand cora like saying like oh i thought they were going to join us you know because obviously cora is still technically like you know a teenager and she doesn't have that much of like you know life experience but actually thinking that tenzin would also be like you know expecting like everyone would join them that really kind of surprised me i'm like wait a minute tenzin you never thought about it like this that there are people who would not actually want to leave their whole life behind and join you guys you know you didn't think about this like this possibility like that really surprised me i'm like what tenzin like <laughs> you still need more <laughs> you know like he said in the previous episode remember like i was lacking experience or something like that i think he still needs more of those experiences because i'm, I'm actually surprised he never thought about it like that he seemed really pissed off he's like why are they not joining us i guess you know what uh now that i think about it i guess it's kind of normal for him to react like this because he's a person with like you know extreme uh you know like duty uh like you know having like an extreme um what do you call it um <clears throat> being extremely uh, concerned about duty and he himself is a very dutiful person and a person who is as stubborn and hard-headed as him and who thinks that duty is like the most important thing in the world he probably doesn't even understand the like you know the whole situation and he thinks that oh everyone will be glad to join us to start in this path of saving the world or something like you know keeping the world in balance he thinks that people will be overjoyed and they'll be happy about the situation like this new duty of like you know helping out everyone and he's thinking about it in this point of view so he actually i think he really got surprised when people were really not happy about him coming and telling like you know them join us brother you are our new uh, airbending uh, comrade he he was not expecting that he thought everyone would be like overjoyed they'll be like oh yes finally i can do something for this world or something like that he thought everyone will be like but no obviously not there will be 99 percent of people will not be happy about this who would want to leave their whole family their whole life behind you know and go with them to i don't know like keep the balance of the world or something like that like who would want that obviously none of them so yeah i guess tenzin realized that by the end of it hopefully because he really seemed extremely concerned he was like yeah why is no one rejoining us <laughs> anyways now zahir is like you know kind of going from one place to another just like you know busting out prisoners out of their like you know cells um we see another guy who what's his name uh ghazim i think that was his name uh Ga yeah ghazim 
Okay. Gazan. Sorry, Gazan, not Gazi. Gazan. Zahir Gazan. And this guy is a firebender. So we have Zahir as an airbender. Gazam as a firebender. Later, a waterbender also joins us. So I'm guessing the final one will be an earthbender. The, I think like the girlfriend that he was talking about or something. I don't know. And Zahir is saying something like, oh, like, you know, like the, we're getting like, I got this new gift. So I think we are correct. Now, I don't understand one thing. Did Ghazan already have firebending or was his firebending also taken away? And he again gained the bending power because, you know, uh, of this whole uh, uh, harmonic convergence. Was that why this is happening or is it that he already had it and his bending was not taken away? That's one thing that I don't understand. So anyways, so next we go to like, you know, Basing Sei and uh, yeah, here I think Kuan was his name, this farmer guy. He seems pretty like, you know, happy with the new bending power, obviously, like, you know, like he can do a lot of things with bending, like, you know, probably help himself farm and everything he was like oh such a cool power like you know power now i can like you know i can farm the whole place without even moving from one place and you know, i can just use bending to do that <laughs> so he's pretty like you know happy about having bending uh but he's not happy about joining them obviously like the way tenzin and Korra was acting here kind of bothered me a little bit tenzin's like obviously you will be you know you're going to join us no, you're going to come with us definitely your wife you know your wife would also be happy if you joined us the wife is like wait what no obviously not <laughs> the children was like daddy is that bald man taking you away <laughs> and the week <laughs> we tenzin got pissed off at that i'm like okay like calm down tenzin you should you should probably like think of this whole situation from their point of view but as i said tenzin is extremely dutiful so he probably thinks that everyone will be happily join them but no that's not how it works um now they then start going from one place to another tenzin just comes up with all the weird stuff he, he he goes to a person eating meat and telling him oh you can become vegetarian and the guy's like nope slams the door shut <laughs> oh that was funny just he's like oh the, the little kid he's like oh you're gonna get a new tattoo and the mother was like nope <laughs> this is uh, that was funny, you know, because you know, like moms don't actually. Most of the moms don't actually want their children getting tattoos and stuff, you know, like at a very young age. <laughs> That's why. That was a joke, I think. <laughs> but Boom is like, you know, Boom is like, oh, I'll become an airbender. I'm happy to be an airbender. And yeah. Okay, the final person we go to is like a person in the like, you know, it's just shutting that himself off in the basement now. Here's the thing. I think this is the only person who was like, you know, happy about this whole situation was the mom. It was like, oh yeah, definitely take him with you. You know, like I don't have any problem. Like otherwise he'll just live his whole life in the basement. And the guy was pretty much, nah, I'm not doing it. I don't care. And he, he came up with the very good responses to Korra. Like, damn. <laughs> yeah, you should, you know, like he should kind of like, I don't know, like become a lawyer or something. He was very good with his words. But Korra obviously is pissed off. He's like, oh, you're coming with us. The mom was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, go with her, you know, like, you know, just, just. I was thinking, I was thinking, like, is the mom okay with this? Like, her being violent with him? But the mom was like, yeah, just, just take him. I don't get like, you know, like. <laughs> but, okay. Uh, and it did not work out, unfortunately. But, yeah. Okay, and then we go to see this, this. Now, I don't know, is this a male or a female? It seems like she's a female. I might be wrong though. So I'm sure we'll get to know in the next episode. Uh, the voice sounds like a female voice. So yeah, we'll see. I think it's a female. She, she's a female, I think. But we'll see. And, and, and I don't think that she has hands. Like, like there's like water. So anyways, let me know if this is a male or a female. And uh, so, like, airbender, firebender, waterbender, and then earthbender, I'm guessing we're going to see, which is the, and like, this girl, the new waterbender, she said, like, your girlfriend or something, so I'm guessing that he's a girlfriend or something, I don't know, like, so, yeah, anyways. Now, 
they next come up with the idea of actually kind of doing a play and i think this was a better idea actually attracting people and you know they kind of do it in an advertisement way now here's the thing you know like if they kind of do it in this way and like you know kind of advertise the whole thing i'm sure a lot of people will genuinely come and join them not like forcing them to come they could be just like oh like you know like you guys we have this you know like if there's any airbender out there who wants to join us you know we'll we'll be happy to like you know take you in so this type of a thing like you know like voluntarily so if they do it like this and actually try to spread the word like in a word throughout the whole world just going from one place to another kind of doing it like this i think it will be very successful like there will definitely be a lot of people who will be happy to join them and uh, yeah well let's let's see and he, they kind of do it like this they kind of the little play was kind of interesting <laughs> tenzin kind of it's like, oh, look at this Tenzin guy, you know, he can airbend, he shows, Tenzin shows his airbending skills. And it's like, oh, there's like a notorious criminal, a firebender out there. Marco comes in and like, uh, oh, there is the, like, you know, that criminal. What are we going to do? But have no fear, our avatar is here. And <laughs> Korra comes in, kind of does a little airbending. And I, <laughs> assuming that Korra was having a lot of fun just tormenting Marco. That was funny. They were like, yep, there you go. That's what you get for, you know, like, play <laughs> for messing with us. And <laughs> I feel like this is going to be a thing, you know, both both Asami and Korra just tormenting Marco after this from here onwards. And <laughs> that'll be kind of funny. <laughs> ah, and, you know, like, Jinora and all of them were doing their own thing. We can see Boomi was also able to kind of airbend a lot better. So, yeah. Now a new person comes in, Kai, you know, like, uh, he's like, oh, I'm going to join you guys. And at first, you know, like when he tells his tale of how, you know, like his mom and dad died at, you know, like saving the place and everything. I, I also just believed him, you know, I also kind of believed him. But, okay, but then, you know, they went up uh, and oh God. When we look back, the outlaws, you know, they come and I'm like, wait a minute, these guys don't look like outlaws, they look like some kind of police force or something. And that's when it struck me, I'm like, wait a minute, is this kid telling the, a lie to us? Is he just trying to get out of this place? And turns out that was true, like Korra comes in and tries to stop them and they're like, what the hell are you doing? We are not outlaws, we are the, I'm the sheriff and these are like, you know, my people. And this, this kid is the outlaw here. And we see like, you know, she stole, he stole so many things. And, and he's like, you know, he kind of apologizes and he's like, yeah, I turned a new leaf after like, you know, getting airbending. And I'm like, no, you did not. Because if you actually did that, you know, you, you would not still have the golden, like, you know, the, 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 the things that you stole with you. You wouldn't do that. So obviously he's lying still to get out of the tricky situation. Uh, but they obviously they believe him and Korra's like all right like you know I'm going to take custody of this kid with us and you know like you don't have any problem do you? Sheriff was like yeah fine go ahead you know? and uh, everyone was like yeah welcome to our new family this and that. Marco's like I have my eyes on you kid I know what you're doing because I was once that kid <laughs> and you know what yeah I'm with Marco this time I also think he's lying. He's probably just pulling the wool over their eyes and I don't know what he's going to do. And as I said, like he's just a kid, so he might not be able to do much things, but he's still a kid with airbending. Uh, so yeah, he might still kind of pose some problem for us, but I think he, he's going to come around, you know, like he'll probably going to, he's probably going to be that type of character who kind of messes around at the beginning, kind of makes problem for us. But later on, he'll probably that kid who kind of really joins us or you know kind of comes turns around turns a new leaf so we'll see we'll see about that and uh, yeah oh and the final scene zuko is here and uh, boy he yeah he he looks kind of like i imagined he's an old man now but he still has that zuko vibe with him <laughs> and he also has a dragon with him now so He's like, all right, we need to go, like, you know, like actually tell everything to Lin Beifong and we need to protect the avatar. So he 
rides on his dragon and is off on his way to protect the avatar or something and i'm guessing we're going to meet uh, he's probably going to go to republic city and uh like meet with lin and you know and they're going to probably say that oh the avatar is off on his on her journey to like you know bring people and the avatar has been exiled from our place <laughs> i wonder what's going to happen if raiku actually comes face to face with zuko <laughs> we'll see but that's it that was my reaction to episode one and two um i'm really loving this season you know uh this the start is fantastic i really hope this continues like we have some really strong antagonist i feel like like some the, the villains are looking really strong and uh, yeah this is going to be really good um zuko's here as well and uh, yeah i'm looking forward to this so let's see what happens that's it thanks for watching guys this was my reaction to the legend of korra book three episode number one and two reactions so if you guys enjoyed this video be sure to press the like button subscribe if you're new to the channel or you haven't subscribed comment down below anything you want to say anything you want to let me know and i'll check them out so yeah so that's it thanks for watching and i'll see you guys next week with two more episodes of the legend of korra until then goodbye and have a nice day